Hi and welcome to our video 25.2 nuclear chemistry half-lives. So, definition of half-life is that half-life is the time it takes for half the nuclei in a radioactive sample to undergo decay. So here, here's what that means. Uh, let's say you have here a hundred gram sample of something that's radioactive. Okay, and let's just say for the sake of argument that its half-life is 10 years. That means in 10 years, instead of being 100 grams, half of it will have turned into something else and will have 50 grams. Okay, half of it is gone in 10 years. In another 10 years, half of it will be gone again and now we'll have 25 grams. In another 10 years, half of it will be gone again and we'll have 12.5 grams and so on and so on and so on. So each one of these is referred to as a half-life. Okay, So 10 years, half of it's gone. 10 more years, another half of it's gone. 10 more years, another half of it's gone. So after one half-life, we have half the original. After another half-life, we have a quarter of the original. After another half-life, we have an eighth of the original, and so on and so forth. Okay? So there's different problem types that we're going to have to learn how to solve, and they're all based on table N, which is selected radioisotopes, and this column here has half-lives of all sorts of different things. And any time you're given a question on the regents about half-life, you're going to find the info you need right here in Table N. So the different types of problems we're going to look at are problems going forward in time, kind of like the sample here, going backwards in time, which is just going the other way. For example, if I said, okay, so we have 12.5 grams of a substance that has a half-life of 10 years, how much would we have 30 years ago, or would we have had 30 years ago? So we would just say, okay, it's going to double one, two, three times. So 12.5 times 2 is 25, 25 times 2 is 50, 50 times 2 is 100. So we would have had 100 grams 30 years ago. And then we'll see some problem dealing with radioactive dating. Okay, so going forward in time, how many grams of a 10 gram sample of iodine-131, which has a half-life of 8 days, well, 8.7, but we'll just work with 8 for now, will remain in 24 days. So the first thing we have to do is figure out how many half-lives we're dealing with. So the number of half-lives is the total time, there's 24 days, divided by the half-life times, 8 days. So it's going to be 24 divided by 8 equals 3. That means we're going to have 3 half-lives. So we're going to cut 10 grams, which is our starting point, in half three times. So we cut it, right, 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, cut in half twice, divided by 2 again is 1.25 grams. Another kind we'll deal with is going backwards in time. So how many grams of a 10 gram sample of I-131, which has a half-life of 8 days, would there have been 24 days ago? Once again, the number of half-lives is the total time divided by the half-life time. So it's, again, 24 divided by 8. So there's three half-lives. Okay, so now we're going to double 10 three times. So we're going backwards in time. So we have 10 grams now, one half life, two half lives, three half lives, one, two, three. So we're going to double 10 or times two three times. So 10 times two is 20, 10 times two is 40, 10 times two is 80. So we went 20, 40, 80 grams. Now, the way I like to do it is actually say, okay, I got a half life, a half life, 
and a half-life. And each one of these represents a times two. So we'll practice some different ways in class and you can come up with the method that works best for you. All right, so half-lives are used for radioactive dating. And it's based on the fact that carbon-14 is radioactive and there's a set ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12. So when they'll figure out how much carbon-12 is in something and they can use that to figure out how much carbon-14 was, was in the object originally and use the half-lives of carbon-14 to figure out how old it is. So a sample of an ancient scroll contains 50% of the original steady-state concentration of carbon-14. How old is the scroll? Well, if it contains 50% of it, that means it went through one half-life. So now, that means one half-life is 5,730 years old. Okay? If it contained, let's say, 25% original, that means it would have undergone two half-lives, right? Because initially 100%, okay? Divided by two once gives us 50%. Divided by two again gives us 25%. So that's one, two half-lives. So that would mean it would be two times five, seven, three, zero years old, or um, one, one, four, six, oh, 11,460 years old. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, strongly recommend if you're having trouble with these problems, you go back and watch through them again. Uh, we're going to be doing some practice of these in school, possibly even a quiz, so it's definitely worth your while to go back and make sure you know how to do it. All right, see you guys in school.